Module 11.2 Definite Integrals and Area Objective Use our knowledge of evaluating definite integrals to find the area of the region between a function and the x-axis. At first thought, if the evaluation of a definite interval gives us the area between the function and the x-axis, it would be very easy. We could simply calculate the definite integral and we would be done. However, there are places where the function crosses the x-axis and this requires us to adjust our evaluation. If a function is below the x-axis, when the definite integral would be negative, so we must be able to take the absolute value of that evaluation because we know that the area is always positive. If the function crosses the x-axis, then we are required to split the indefinite integral into regions where the evaluation above the x-axis is kept and the absolute value of the definite integral of the region below the x-axis is required. We will then sum these areas. Okay, here's an example of the area above the x-axis. If we'll look at this function and we're going to this point here and then we're going to rise 2 and run 1 as the slope of this line and so we're going to end up with a line that looks kind of like this. Okay, now the interesting thing is we're looking at the region from 0 to 3, which is our integrands. So we're looking at on the x-axis from 0 to 3. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're looking at the area in here between 0 and 3 underneath the curve between it and the x-axis. Alright, let's, so let's find this area. So if we take the integral of this function that's going to give us 2x squared divided by 2 plus 1x and that is the integral from 0 to 3. And that's going to give us, if we plug in 3 into this, that'll be, and, and notice that we can cancel the 2's by the way, so that would be 3 squared uh, plus 3 minus, and then we're going to plug 0 in, and that's just going to give us 0 plus 0. Alright, and so that's going to give us 9 plus 3, which is equal to 12. The area underneath this function is going to be equal to 12 square units. Alright, let's look at this function. Here we have a y-intercept of negative 4, and our rise and run is going to be 1, so it should be something that looks kind of like this. So we've got some kind of diagonal objective here. Now we're going to find the area of this between 1 and and 4, which is about where this is going to meet. Okay, so we're looking at this area here. And notice, if we did put 4 in there, notice that 4 minus 4 will give us 0. We plug in a function, so it does meet at, at 4. So let's take the integral of this function, and that will give us x squared over 2 minus 4x. And we're going to take, and we're going to take that integral from 1 to 4. Okay? And so let's plug our 4 in. That will give us 16 over 2 minus 4 times 4 minus, let's plug our 1 in. So that would be 1 squared is 1 over 2 minus 4 times 1. So that would be 8 minus 16 on this one minus 1 half minus 4. So it's going to be negative three and a half, and that will give us negative eight plus three and a half, and that's going to give us a negative four and a half. Now remember, this area is underneath the line, and so we got a negative value. So when we get done with this section, because it's negative, we're just simply going to take the absolute value of that and get four and a half, and that would be the area for this function. Example 3, area of a function that is both below and above the x-axis. If we look at this function, the y-intercept is at 3, and this thing is going to rise 2 and run 1, rise 2 and run 1. So we're dealing with a function that looks probably like this. Alright, so we've got a good graph of the function, and we need to find the area of this function between it and the x-axis 
between 0 and 6. So that's from here to here. All right, so notice this part of it, portion of it is going to be fine because we can find this portion because it's above. This portion right here is below the x-axis, so we've got to watch out. It's going to give us a negative value. Okay, so we need to break this function into two parts. First, we need to find out where this meets the x-axis so that we can separate it into two parts. So we're going to let the function 2x minus 3 equal to 0. So let 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And we're going to add 3 to both sides and divide by 2. And so now we know that this point right here is going to be 3 halves. So we're going to have to separate this integral. So before we do that, let's just go ahead and take the indefinite integral of this function, and then we can separate it between 0 and 3 over 2, and then 3 over 2 to 6. Okay. So if we take the integral of 2x minus 3, that's going to be equal to 2x squared over 2 minus 3x. Okay, plus c, but in this case we're doing a definite integral. Notice that the 2's cancel. So we're going to write this as the integral from 0 to 3 over 2 of x squared minus 3x plus the integral from 3 halves to 6 of x squared minus 3x. Now, we need to remember that we're going to have to take the absolute value of this first one because it's negative. Okay, so let's go through and plug the numbers in. So that would be, okay, in the first one, we're going to have 3 halves quantity squared minus 3 times 3 halves, where I plug 3 halves into the function, is the first half, minus, and then the second half is going to be 0 squared minus so that's going to give us a zero. And in the second part, okay, so we're going to add this, and let's look at the second part. Six quantity squared minus three times six minus three over two quantity squared minus three times three over two. And then let's take this first half. First half will give us the absolute value of negative two 0.25 minus the 0, which still gives us negative 2.25, plus, and then in the second part, we're going to have, give us 18 plus 9 fourths, which will be equal to, and remember, if we're going to take the absolute value of this, it's going to give us positive, and so my, break out my calculator, my final answer will be 18. Now that we understand the concept of area and definite integrals, let's have a little fun with this. Okay, so let's take this integral from 2 to 7. Now if you look, the y-intercept is right here at 4. This thing crosses the x-axis at 2 and it heads downward like this. Okay, so, and they're wanting the integral from 2 to 7. So that's from here over to 7. So 7's on over here. It's almost out of the scope of this graph. And so we're going to find this area. Now all of this is negative, and since 2 starts at the x-axis, we don't have to worry about which ones are positive and which one negative. We know that we're going to get a negative value for this since it's below the x-axis. So let's go ahead and take the integral, and then we'll take the absolute value of it at the end. So we're going to take the integral of this, and that's going to be 4x minus x to the third over 3, and this integral is going to be taken between 2 and 7. So let's plug our 7, that would be 4 times 7 minus 7 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 2 minus 2 squared so that'll be equal to 28 minus 343 over 3 minus, that is, 8 minus 4. And we'll break out our calculator. And this will end up giving me 
a negative 271 over 3. Now remember, we said that we were going to get a negative answer since it's below, so let's take the absolute value and we'll get 271 over 3. We don't need to let the notation fool us. This is the same concept. Okay, example 5, we're going to find the area of the region between the function and the x-axis on the interval from 0 to 3. Now, if we set this function equal to 0, we would see that it would cross the y-axis at 1 and the x-axis at 1. And so this function looks kind of like this. And it's going to be symmetric, so it's going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, notice that we're going to have a little area here. Since we're finding the interval between 0 and 3, we're going to have a little area between 0 and 1 where the function, the area of the function is above. And then we're going to have between here and 3, we're going to have area that's below the axis. So we've got a little area above and quite a bit of area below. Alright, so we're going to have to break this into two parts. We're going to have to break this into the integral from 0 to 1 of the function, 1 minus x squared. And we're going to have to add this to the integral of the area from 1 to 3 of this function. Now, we need to keep in mind that the second area is going, we're going to have to take the absolute value of it. All right, so because it's going to be negative, so we're going to need to make it positive for the area. Okay, so now let's first take this integral, so that will be x minus x to the third over 3, and that's from 0 to 1, plus, and we're going to take the absolute value of this. This is going to be um, x minus x cubed over 3. And we're going to take this area between 1 and 3. And we're going to take the absolute value of that. Okay, so we're going to plug in 1. So that would be 1 minus 1 third minus minus 0. If we plug 0 in, that's what it's going to give us. Okay, plus the absolute value of 3 minus... Now, 3 cubed is 27 over 3, which is going to give me 9. And that function minus 1 minus 1 third. So that's going to give us 2 thirds minus 0 is gone. Okay, plus the absolute value of negative 6 minus 2 thirds. And so that's going to give us 2 thirds plus the absolute value of negative 6 and 2 thirds. And that's going to give us 6 and 2 thirds, which is going to give us. 7 and 1 third. And that'll be the area of this function. And notice that we did it with both a positive area and one below where it's negative. And so we took the absolute value of it so that we could add those two together.